Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. What do you see when you drive around town? When you go to the store or out to dinner? When you walk around your neighborhood or the golf course? What do you see in the people you encounter in the course of your day every day? Everywhere Jesus went, he saw the potential for a great harvest of souls and the need for helpers to join him in the business of gathering people into the kingdom of God. Day after day, Jesus preached the gospel of salvation with unequaled authority. Day after day, he performed miracles with supernatural power. And then one day, Jesus gathered 12 men around him and said, Now it's your turn. These guys were following Jesus because he was fascinating. Nobody had ever done what he did. Nobody ever said the things he said or said them the way he did. You've heard of must-see TV. He was must-see JC. Maybe Jesus was the one they were all looking for and had all been waiting for all their lives. The one the prophets had said would come one day. Maybe Jesus was the guy. And wouldn't that be fascinating? And to tell the truth, whether he turned out to be the Messiah or not, they were also following him because he was fun. Hang around Jesus and you got a taste of a better, more abundant life. Jesus wasn't afraid of Pharisees or Sadducees or Roman soldiers for that matter. All the people who terrified and annoyed them. Let the bad guy set a trap for Jesus and he would turn the tables on them with a simple question. Let him tell a story and he would turn your whole understanding about life and about God upside down. Jesus made blind men see, deaf men hear, and cripples walk. Lepers were cleansed and lunatics came to their senses just because he said so. Jesus could conjure up enough food to feed 5,000 people in the middle of nowhere, no less. You never knew what he was going to do next, which is probably why these 12 disciples didn't see their divine assignment coming. But you should. If you're following Jesus today for the fun or the fascination of it, you best face up to the fact that he's got a divine assignment for you too. Take part in the harvest. There's a lot of harvesting to be done, Jesus says, but the workers are few. You see, Jesus didn't come to fascinate followers or make life fun. The miracles and the teaching were not the end. They were means to an end. Jesus came to conduct a harvest for the Lord of the harvest. To gather people into the kingdom of God. But Jesus does not intend to do all the work himself. Though there was one part that only he could do. So today... You and I will be spending some time reviewing the receiving of our divine assignment. Now, you did not receive your assignment today unless you became a follower of Jesus for the first time today. You receive your assignment when you receive your salvation. When you have been harvested for the kingdom, you become a harvester yourself. With Jesus and with the other disciples, he has assigned to this the ultimate work of God. In a church where I once served, a lifelong church lady told me one day, matter-of-factly and without regret, that talking to people about Christianity was not the sort of thing she did. I thought, 